All right, so we dive into the USC Trojans and what a ridiculous turnover we have had at Troy. Whew, let's look at the numbers. Last year was not good. Number 104 in PPA margin. Uh, they went 4-8. and eight. Post-game win expectancy actually had them as a four-win team. So it wasn't even like they had a bunch of upsets where they should have won, etc. They just were not a good football team last year. Uh, it, it, this team, after that Stanford loss, there were games where it certainly looked like they just quit. And obviously, I hate using that word, but this team was the epitome of that. They just didn't look like they wanted to be there a lot of the time. Uh, I mean, they, there, there were some games where they actually showed up against BYU late in the season. They certainly showed up and tried to win that game. But also, you turned around late, late on Championship Saturday and played against Cal and had no desire to finish out that season. None whatsoever. So, regardless, uh, they lose some pretty talented players. Drake London, Keontae Ingram, Drake Jackson, uh, Chris Steele is gone. Like Jacob uh, Lickenstein, like he's gone. Like they, they lost some good dudes. But uh, you look at this roster strength, it's number seven overall, number three on offense, number 25 on defense. They brought in a bunch of talent. Just a bunch of talent. We'll start off with the offense here. Uh, it's a Lincoln Riley offense. I mean, come on. You you know exactly what you're going to get here. You got uh, Caleb Williams at quarterback. You've got Jordan Addison and Mario Williams at wide receiver, along with other guys as well. I'm just naming off the the big names and whatnot. Uh, the running backs, Travis Dye. They also brought in Davis from Stanford. Uh, an offensive line led by uh, the left tackle, Andrew Voorhees. Like, this offense is probably going to be awesome. Now, I say probably because these are all just a bunch of pieces that you're trying to meld together into a team. What's the chemistry going to be like, et cetera? I'm really curious. There's no way to look at last season stats and have any idea what this year is going to look like. Uh, but you can look at Oklahoma's a little bit. Oklahoma ran the ball 52.6% of the time. Is USC going to do that with all that star power at wide receiver? Like, that's that's what I'm curious about. They ran it a bunch because they figured out quickly that their passing offense was not quite up to snuff. Caleb Williams has shown signs of brilliance, but going into another season, a, a second season with Lincoln Riley, does he open up that passing game a little bit more does he feel more comfortable throwing the football as opposed to resorting to uh, taking off and running with it? That's what I would like to know. So if he hasn't, like if he's still running the ball like that, uh, I'm very curious, very curious what it's going to look like. Um, on top of that, we'll move on to the defense. This is obviously the weakness. There is talent, obviously, but the offense has the majority of it. Now, on defense, you got a bunch of transfers coming in, 11 new guys. Uh, it's not a lot of star power. It's guys like the linebacker Shane Lee that played at Alabama quite a bit, um, you know, but not not guys that were starting at most places, et cetera. They do have some. Regardless, uh, the defensive line is number 38 in terms of talent. They returned three players with 290-plus snaps, so, you know, there's some experience there coming back, but is that the experience that you want? Uh, what is Alex Grinch going to be able to do with these guys? The linebacker only has one returning player with over 150 snaps. Uh, in the secondary, ton of transfers. Ton of tra I, you got no idea how these guys are going to meld together, what the chemistry is going to be like, et cetera. Uh, their projected favorites in 10 games, their win total is 9.5. Uh, Juice the same for both over at BetUS. Uh, the conference odds, I mean, they are 2-1. to one. That might be a bit of a stretch early on. I mean, I know that there's a lot of hype around this program. Uh Let's talk keys to the season here. Completely unprojectable. That's that's the key to the season here. <laughs> Lots of talent, but how does it gel? Uh, you know, D could be good, the vast majority of the talent's on the offense, but if Caleb Williams isn't improved as a passer, then what do you do, right? Are Travis Dye and Austin Davis good enough to carry this offense if they can't get the ball to the receivers? Like, they'll, they'll have to figure out something. And I, I trust Lincoln Riley to have a good offense, for sure. Um, I can't begin to explain how useless last year's numbers are. <laughs> this is a completely different team. Completely different team. Um, 21 transfers, 16 graduates or NFL guys are gone. So that's 37 total players out. And they brought in eight recruits and 19 transfers so far uh, to make 27 in. So they lost 37 guys, and they brought in 27. 
Uh, the five-game stretch starting in week three is going to determine whether or not this is, team is a Pac-12 title contender. Uh, you got Fresno, you got at Oregon State, Arizona State, Washington State, and at Utah. Like that stretch right there is you're going to figure out what this team is. Uh, the only game that I've got them losing in that stretch is at Utah. I've got them losing at UCLA because I think UCLA has a way more experienced team, et cetera, this season. I expect that to shift. Look at this very much the same way that you saw Nick Saban's first season at Alabama go, right? Tommy Tuberville and the Auburn Tigers beat Alabama in the first year. And then the next year, Alabama crushed them. That's what I kind of see happening here, right? I, I think that Lincoln Riley's the new kid on the block. Um, I think he's going to get a win over Notre Dame, et cetera. But as far as the battle for LA goes, Chip Kelly and his experience team, the guys that have been there with him the whole time, they are going to want that game much more than I think USC will. So uh, so I'll give that one to, to UCLA. But that, that's still got USC at 10-2. and two. So, I mean, that goes over. I don't feel great about it. Could I see him losing another game somewhere? Yeah, I could see him losing to Notre Dame. I could see him losing to Washington State, uh, at Oregon State. I mean, hell, Fresno State. Like, there's all kind of stuff. And never count out Stanford, I guess, in, in that game in week two. But I would imagine this bunch wants to come in and make a statement because that loss to Stanford is really what lost Clay Hilton his job last year. So, that is the way that I would look at that. Um, I mean, this that looks like it's going to be a lot of fun in Troy. But with the defense and a still young, a somewhat young offense trying to figure out everything in year one, all these guys trying to figure out how to play in the Pac-12, and I know that a bunch of the transfers came from Pac-12 teams. I get that. I just think it's going to be a little more tricky than people want to, uh, than, than USC fans want to believe that it will be. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.